IndyCar had their first ever million dollar challenge all-star race this past weekend and it was an absolute dud. What do you mean dud? This was a perfect event at the exclusive Thermal Club. Thank you again to their members for letting us be here. Are you a Townsend Bell cosplayer? What? When IndyCar lost Texas Motor Speedway on the calendar, they had this really awkward six week gap in between the first and second races of the year. So their idea was, let's try to come up with something to put in this place. That's where Thermal Club comes into place. An ultra exclusive, Thermal Club is an exclusive motorsports community located on an exclusive racetrack in the exclusive part of California for their exclusive prestigious members. I say exclusive enough? Enough? Okay, great. Yeah, what he said, an ultra exclusive motorsport community in California, outside the Coachella Valley. And IndyCar decided that they were going to have their million dollar race here, except for the fact that it wasn't really a million dollars. It was $500,000 to the winner. And realistically, the driver takes home about mm, $100,000 of that after taxes and fees and managers and everything else gets their hands on it. So at the end of the day, it was false advertising to begin with. Nobody bit on the other $500,000 portion of that million dollars, which IndyCar had desperately hoped one of the members of the club would put up. They decided not to do that. So IndyCar now has this really bad race. Thermal Club is a great driver's racetrack. It's great because it's a track day track. It wasn't designed to have racing on it. So when you put race cars out there, it kind of was just follow the leader for the most part. Sure, they had great tire deg, and there's a little bit of strategy involved, but overall, this was a two and a half hour infomercial for Thermal Club. Thermal Club is an exclusive motorsports club in California. Alex Polo ends up winning the race, and he gets to take home some of the money, which honestly, if there's anybody in the field that actually needs the money, it's Alex Polo, thanks to his ongoing litigation with McLaren. And he also has a new kid, which I've heard are expensive. So he, win, he wins the race, Scott McLaughlin comes in second, and then you have Felix Rosenquist coming home in third. I think the funniest part about this is sixth place, who makes it into the, you know, the final there, the 12 cars that were in the shootout, he takes home the same amount of money that the people that didn't even make it to the main event take home. So there's an absolute flaw in this whole thing. You couldn't repair the car, which RLL found out the hard way, and Christian Lungar was like, we might not even come to this next year. That's great, I'll let you get back to that in just one second. But did you know that members of the Thermal Club, they eat caviar out of the cup holders of their GT3 RS? That is luxury. I'm not sure if if they do eat caviar out of their cup holders, but if they do, that's disgusting because those are never that clean. Regardless, Lungard wasn't happy and neither was the rest of the RLL team, which is understandable. Not, I don't think anybody was really that psyched about this event. Well, let me say that. Nobody outside of Team Penske was really that psyched about this entire event, or Connor Daly, who was paid to be there by, by IndyCar. Everybody else was kind of like, this is a real waste of time for us. Roman Grosjean got wrecked out before they even got to turn one. He was like, I didn't sign up for this. What are we even doing here? At the end of the day, this ended up costing team owners more money than it was probably worth. They had nine hours of testing, which was just a nine-hour infomercial for Thermal Club, and then a two-and-a-half-hour window on NBC for more of a Thermal Club commercial. Golf has Augusta? Well, Motorsports has the Thermal Club. That was good, right? That's what you guys wanted me to say? Make it seem like it's really upscale? Okay, great. Thank you. At no point has anybody ever said that Thermal Club is the Augusta of Motorsports. First off, it's not even green, so let's just start there. It's not manicured. It is a desert. It does not look anything like Augusta. If you want to say the Thermal Club looks like something, you could be like, oh, it maybe looks like TPC... Scottsdale or something along those lines. But let's just go ahead and draw the line and say this does not like whatever Townsend Bell says, just don't pay attention to that because he has a vested interest in Thermal Club. One of his cars is stored there. And did we hear about it? Overall, the entire broadcast, as much as I love NBC, was like I said, just riding Thermal Club, just making sure that they mentioned Thermal Club as much as they could. Thank you to the prestigious members of the Thermal Club for granting us access to these hallowed grounds this weekend. Yes, thank you to the members of the Thermal Club. Thank you, Townsend Bell. But I think everybody was just fed up with this entire event by the end of it. And Mark Miles honestly should have been left at the airport. Like the gift of John Travolta and Pulp Fiction where he's walking around going like this. That's what Mark Miles should have looked like because this event was a dud. There's no reason they couldn't have found a race to actually have a points paying date here. They could have even done this as a points paying date. Having the field split up into two with only half the field out there felt like it got strung out very quickly. There wasn't a lot of action. And then only having 12 cars in the final, two 10 lap segments just didn't work. Everything about this was boring. 
Apparently, they tried to make it somewhat like the F1 Sprint format, which is also boring, which means that this was going to be boring. Penske Entertainment certainly took a risk with this, but it wasn't really that big of a risk. It was just Roger trying to help out his rich friends over at Thermal Club. This entire event was a gigantic waste of time and money. So for all of us that spent two and a half hours sitting in front of our televisions, I'd like my money back. Regardless of what Connor Daly says, that's, and he said, if you don't like this, you're not a true race fan, and then call me a not a true race fan then. I'm the guess I'm not a race fan, Connor Daly, because that was absolutely one of the most boring two and a half hours of my entire life. I'd rather watch the NASCAR Cup Series go caution free at Richmond or Phoenix at this point. What we watched was not very entertaining. Sure, Alexander Rossi put on a slight show. Colton Herta tried to exploit the rules, put on a little bit of a show. But at the end of the day, it was Alex Pelo checking out Scott McLaughlin and Felix Rosenquist just trying to catch him. And they never really even got close. This entire event was a failure from the beginning. I don't think it's going to do anything with TV ratings. It should have been at Texas Motor Speedway. And they're saying that, oh, we couldn't go back to Texas. You're telling me you couldn't have gone to Texas this weekend because NASCAR was in Austin or because it was too close to the NASCAR Cup Series date. None of it really seems to make sense. It just felt like they really wanted to go have an exhibition race. If they want to do it again, fine. Maybe not at Thermal, but I think there's a lot of critiques that you could do to this event and something they should absolutely explore. It either has to be at the beginning of the season. It honestly just has to be at the beginning of the season like NASCAR's clash because you put in the middle of the season doesn't matter because everybody's just enamored with the Indy 500 and at the end of the season nobody cares to begin with so they got to do something if they're going to continue this but this was not it absolutely not it I tweeted out that Penske Entertainment and IndyCar should fire everybody that came up with this idea and I still stand by that because this was really really bad it completely does not connect with the average IndyCar fan that's great. We'll go to that in just one second. But if you weren't so poor, you too could be a member of the Thermal Club. Was that enough poor shaming for you? More? All right, I'll get it next time. And I did love an IndyCar fan that was there. And he was like, I know the ticket prices, you know, probably help do this. But this is an event that every IndyCar fan needs to attend. Because I can just walk around and I can walk up to drivers. I can walk up to crew members. Everybody's just hanging out, being right here. Yeah because there's no one there. Again, that's the ticket price. The irony in the whole statement, I was like, what are we doing with this? Everything about this weekend was just not very good. Alex Polo, like I said, wins the race, and then everything else was pretty forgettable. The, <laughs> the podium celebration looked lamer than a K1 speed podium celebration. I've seen kids' birthday parties that have had better podiums than this right here. And we're supposed to believe that this is a major <laughs> motorsport race a major motorsport championship put on this exhibition event and they stood on top of a eight inch podium. What are we even doing? And a parking lot by the looks of it. Everything about this was just really bad. It was like if, if they played the masters at your local, think about the most affordable country club in your city. One that's probably like 300 bucks a month. And then they went ahead and just played a major there. And you'd be like, this is terrible. One, they're way too good for this course. Two, where are you going to have the celebration at? And then they had the trophy celebration out in the parking lot while somebody's trying to load up their Toyota RAV4 and there's a mom trying to load up a bunch of kids from the swim club right into a Suburban. Everything about it would just not work. And that's what this was. It did not work. It didn't connect with IndyCar fans. Nobody. I haven't seen a single person give this a positive review. None of the media members seem to want to be there. The team owners, Ed Carpenter, was not happy about being there. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would like to go on record, but they don't want to face the wrath of Roger Penske. At some point, he's going to get too old to yell at him, right? Like, eventually? Regardless, this was just not a good event. But let me know in the comments what you think about it. I didn't love it, though. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog. Thank you again to the members of the Thermal Club for allowing us to be here this weekend.